Well, uh, hello. Um, I'm from the Department of Italian. I'm Cormac O'Quillianoin, uh, and I'm going to talk about Italian, but I'm also going to talk about languages in general and why it's a good idea, uh, as it says on our, on our uh, school leaflet here, one language is never enough, maybe even two languages. Uh, I'm going to, to outline some of the advantages uh, of uh, having a command of a few a few different languages and what we're, we think we're at here. So welcome to Trinity. You've turned up on a, on a nice day. Um, if you've been around the front square, you will have noticed the, the large thing in the middle, which is called the Campanile. Uh, it's called the Campanile because it's a bell tower. And the Italian for a bell is Campana. Uh, and the, uh, the Campanile of Italy are justly famous. Uh, for example, the one by, designed by Giotto in the middle of Florence. And uh, Italians are sometimes uh, prone to a, for, uh, a sort of localism, a sort of vice of, of preferring your own parish pump to anybody else's, which in Italian is called campanilismo, uh, where you are devoted to your own bell tower. Um, so um, this is a, a battle between Florence and Siena in 1260, and they still haven't quite got over it. Italy is a place of great... A tradition of long-lived tradition. Um, so that was your Italian lesson. Uh, we'll, we'll move. Oh, sorry. There is one, one little bit more. Um, the Italian for tomato is pomodoro, but the thing on the left is not a tomato. It's by a Mr. Pomodoro, who has uh, got versions of this beautiful sphere uh, around several places in the world, including the United Nations and uh, University of California, Berkeley. The Italian government. Uh, if it really likes you, we'll give you uh, a statue of this, uh, a version of a cast of this uh, sphere. So uh, Italian and Italy have left their marks on Trinity, as indeed uh, on many places around Europe. The Italian influence on style, architecture, art, uh, and so forth is extremely important in the whole of European history. Um, we're part of the School of Languages. There are lots of different languages uh, you can do here, including Italian. And the modern uh, languages in Trinity are the oldest established in the world. A uh, provost in the 18th century introduced languages, modern languages, against pretty stiff opposition, it has to be said, from some of the fellows of the college. But they have really, uh, they've become very deeply uh, rooted here. And we have a, a long tradition of being open to foreign lands and foreign cultures. Um, in fact, Trinity College was set up to stop Irish people from wandering abroad and being infected by popery, but that was back in the days of Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, nowadays, we've sort of embraced um, our, our inner uh, other, and we are uh, very happily a participant university in the world. Now, Languages in the 18th century would have been an accomplishment, something you would, it would be nice to know, you'd be a more civilized person if you knew them. Why bother with doing languages today? And the real reason is the world is full of foreigners. Many of them speak foreign languages. Uh, English isn't even the biggest language uh, in, the, in the world today. It's a wonderful language to have. It's been a great legacy. We're living off it. It's a marvelous uh, asset to Ireland and other places, uh, but it's just one among the, the, the many big languages of the world. And strangely, if you are in a big language, if you're living inside a big language, you may be more isolated in certain ways. You may live more inside a monoculture than if you came from a very small country with a small language and were therefore forced to, low, to know lots of others. So, the, uh, yeah, Europe is full of languages. I'm afraid this image is a little bit old, as you can see from the design of the mobile phone on it. Uh, but the point is there, that there, there are all of these languages which are really very much in use. I mean, just this year, we've, we, Croatian has become a, an official language of the European Union. A few years ago, Irish became an official uh, language. But, Really, the, uh, the, the 500 million people of the European Union, which is one market, but it's also it's, it's one, one place of communication, uh, is uh, really uh, the most multilingual uh, the, um, organization that you could possibly imagine. 
Now, again, English, although a very wonderful language, as I keep saying, uh, is not by any, by any means the major language of the European Union in terms of the population. It is becoming a, has become a very important language for the administration of Europe, but uh, there are 90 million uh, speakers of German in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and uh, around there. There are 58 million speakers of, uh, of Italian. Um, Polish is the second language of Ireland today. It's a big world out there. There are lots of languages, and we can do business with them. This is one of the things that people keep saying about language, that it's useful for business, and this is absolutely true. But also, we might as well get to know uh, the people that we are, that we are associated with. Uh, English, as I say, will take you many places. It's a, it's a marvelous uh, passport around the world. And if you go to Holland, it is embarrassing that you will not have to even try saying one word of Dutch. It, it, they have an astonishing command of our language. Uh, Italy is different. Italians do study English at school, but it, they don't always have terribly fluent English. Uh, so it is, if, it, if Italians wish to do, uh, to do business or to have contacts with English people, English-speaking people, very often they do need people who can mediate between the two languages. Now, this is a point, actually, about the purpose of studying foreign languages, either with their large cultural components at university or just purely as, uh, as languages for business in a different type of institution. The point is this, that um, when you have done a foreign language up to a great a really good standard. It doesn't mean that you are a native speaker of the foreign language. R very few of us get to that point. But you are a person who can mediate between your own culture and the other culture. And it is exactly that point of understanding more than one culture, of understanding how people's minds work in, in, in two different cultures, and having the language to, to back up that understanding. That's the, the real value, the sort of added value of the people who, are, who, who can work between languages between cultures. Well, there are two main reasons why languages might be good for you. For uh, cultural and career purposes, it must be said that uh, most of our graduates don't go on to work in things that are associated directly with language, but they use their language, and particularly they use the skills that they have built while doing uh, the, the language. Now, Ireland is a huge magnet for foreign direct investment. Lots of Americans set up here. They can, uh, they can speak the language. Uh, we can speak the language. We're fine. We're all very happy in our English world. But what do, why are they here? They're here because we're in Europe, even because we're in the Euro. And they do need to talk to foreigners. So having that, uh, that multilingual uh, group of people in the country is enormously important. Lots of employers want to recruit language graduates or people who just know languages. Uh, two of my own children went through Trinity College. One of them got his first job because he could speak French as well as having done economics. Um, the other one makes a, a, a lot, a, does, spends a lot of her time involved with Irish. So language, in fact, although she's a, she's a law graduate, uh, language is a very useful thing to have. Um, whether or not it is the main designation of your university degree. Language learners, well, they work hard. I can guarantee that if any of you are coming here to study. Um, but they learn also how to think, well, outside many boxes. They learn how to work with other people. They learn the value of accurate communication. Uh, you know, it really does make a difference if you uh, spell words correctly in foreign languages. And oddly enough, this has a great effect on your your command of your own language. They learn research skills, IT skills. Well, these you would pick up now in many uh, of our courses here in Trinity. Cultural awareness, time and project management. Yes, in your fourth year here, you write a dissertation. You've got to, you've got to assemble a lot of information, a lot of argument, and present it in a readable, properly organized way. That's a higher level skill, like, like the editing, like the translation skills that we also teach. And employers are aware that the, uh, the foreign language and cultural awareness aspects of our courses are also uh, important for Ireland's uh, future 
and survival in a very internationalized world. But I want to make another argument for languages and not just for Italian. Um, if you live inside a monoculture, it seems that the world extends out as far as you can say the words for it. And then it sort of stops. In real life, the world goes on. There are other points of view, other ways of seeing. There are other histories, other cultures. And if you can penetrate those, if you can be, live inside your own, uh, your own box, but also break out uh, into the wider world, you are hugely enriched as a person. Uh, and you are a useful person in the world, because the world needs more people who have more than one way of looking at things. Now, we are very lucky. Why shouldn't we love English? We speak the language of Rupert Murdoch and William Shakespeare. I don't want to do down Rudolf Mur uh, sorry, Rupert uh, Mur uh, Murdoch, a very wonderful person, he runs one of the best um, news TV stations in Italy, for example, against stiff competition. But I would point out that Mr. Shakespeare seems to have a certain awareness of Italian. And I would argue that English literature and English culture has been, at different times, greatly enriched by its contact with Italian. Even an imagined Italy, even the idea of the good life, the aristocratic life in the Renaissance, uh, as imagined by, uh, by a man from Warwickshire, can, uh, be a, uh, can animate a whole set of stories and uh, values and beliefs across the whole of Europe. So if you understand Italian culture, if you read the Italian stories behind Romeo and Juliet, or as the Italians say, Juliet and Romeo, uh, or Giulietta e Romeo, um, you will actually have a better understanding of why we have the culture that we have. It's the, in, the, the, the mutual influence of different cultures is, is, is enormously enriching and important. If you only know the outcome of this exchange and don't see into the process of it, you are really left a little bit uh, like a fish out of water. Um, All's Well That Ends Well, another of Mr. Shakespeare's efforts, uh, comes from a story in Boccaccio's Decameron, one of the books that we we study in our course. And, well, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that Italian is the only source of everything. Um, there are many important cultures that we should get to know and that we should explore. We do have some rather good sort of standalone writers, such as Dante Alighieri, who is uh, Italy's, um, who occupies in Italian culture something of the position that Shakespeare would in, uh, in uh, England. Um, coming at the start of, the, of vernacular writing. And this medieval writer uh, gave us the uh, story of uh, a journey through hell, purgatory, and heaven in his Divine Comedy. Um, Francesco Petrarca taught us how you ought to uh, be in love with somebody and how you should worship them for their spiritual and physical perfections. And he gave really uh, the, the, uh, an entire repertoire for romantic love, which lasted in Europe for half a millennium. OK, there have been other reasonably talented Italians over time. Um, not all modern Italians quite live up to the, uh, the aspirations uh, of earlier times. There have been some uh, misunderstood Italians who are not as highly regarded in the world, perhaps, as they should be. Um, and even in Ireland, our Italian experiences have been mixed. However, it should be said, there were good times uh, with, our, with our Italian uh, football manager, uh, as well as bad times. So thank you. Now, OK, what is it like doing Italian in Trinity? Well, there's two ways you can do it, either in European studies or as half of a two-subject degree. Each of them has got lots of language um, and culture, but of different kinds of different de definitions of culture. In European studies, it's uh, society and politics and culture. In uh, TSM, the emphasis is a bit more on the literary side. But even in the first year of TSM, and this is what I'm going to concentrate on now because you will have more information from European studies. Um, 
We get into modern Italian history since the Risorgimento and the unification of Italy 150 years ago. We start introducing you to the Italian novel, Italian theatre, Italian poetry, but in rather small doses in your first year because we take beginners. We take complete beginners, and by the end of the first year, you can cope with a certain number of modern Italian texts. The Italian history course, then, telling the stories of the, the great makers of Italy in the 19th century, sorry, um, and the not always happy developments that follow. We should say that we teach, uh, we teach Italian history and culture um, warts and all. Um, so Mr. Mussolini is, uh, is included there, and uh, Italian fascism of the 20th century is one of the topics that we study. So it's not that we're trying to give you a tourist version of Italy as being completely perfect in every way, uh, but we are presenting it as a big, fascinating, contradictory country, uh, well worth studying just for its own sake. The novel that we uh, look at in the first year at the moment is a memoir about growing up in Rome uh, under the fascist era at a time when uh, you, could be, uh, you could be a devout Catholic, uh, but also accept the what we would now see as the uh, rather inhumane uh, tenets of fascism. So this is just an example of how politics gets into our courses. Uh, our our theatre is, in the first year, is Dario Fo, uh, who won the Nobel Prize, but has mostly been a, a troublemaker, uh, a political troublemaker for most of his life, writing extremely funny, amusing, slapstick, uh, propagandist plays. Among our poets, Gabriele D'Annunzio, who at one stage decided to invade a little bit of Yugoslavia. So politics, yes, it does come into our courses. In the second year, you continue with language, literature, and culture. Uh, culture of all kinds, including popular culture, as well as language. And in the literature, we do make a start on Dante's Inferno, uh, which is, of course, one of the great enduring classics of world literature. Dante, who starts off lost in a dark wood and passes through the gates of hell, where it says, all hope abandon ye who enter here, and makes his way down through the sinners of hell, and then up through the saved in purgatory, and then finally out into the outer reaches of paradise with his Beatrice, one of the great iconic uh, love stories of, uh, of European history. We do a little bit more of, of Petrarca, the great sonnet master of the Middle Ages, uh, is, uh, who was in love with Laura. We do a little bit of, of write, the writings of Lorenzo de' Medici, who, among other things, was a playwright and poet. Then we get into uh, modern cinema in our culture course and study a number of different uh, films which have made history, uh, uh, for example, neorealism in uh, Italian uh, cinema and literature was one of the great forces of 20th century, mid 20th century culture. Uh, and some of these films deal indeed with, again, politics, uh, mafia, some of the worst sides of Italian life. We also try to create a, um, a sense of being able to analyze culture, not just in the official sense, but culture as it exists, for better or worse, in, uh, in uh, the in everyday life. Um, our students have to go to Italy and spend two months there while taking their course. This is the same in any other language. I would argue that Italy is one of the possibly more pleasant places to be incarcerated in for two months, but you must make up your own mind. Here are some of our students from a few years ago suffering through those, th those uh, two months. We have Socrates, or Erasmus links, I should now say, Erasmus links with several universities uh, on our own bat, such as Bologna, Pavia, Trieste, um, but also other departments in college have got links with Italy. So you could find yourself going to Italy either through your Italian department contact or sometimes through your other department. And we send you to rather nice places. Um, OK, I'm not, I won't go through all of the details of our courses. Uh, we introduce more options in the third and fourth years. 
uh, and we try to develop higher language skills, not just straight language learning and translation, but also approaches to difficult or complex translations and the ability to use different types of resources when creating and editing texts in translation. At the end of the third year, the student must choose whether to continue with Italian into the fourth year or whether to go on with the other subject, whatever it may be, into the fourth year. So you stop one of your subjects after three years, you specialize in the other. You've got a degree, however, in both of these, and many students keep up the, the subject that they have uh, allegedly forgotten um, by various means, such as working it into their final year dissertation. The dissertation offers a very wide choice. It's based on your interests, but it also has to be related to our course. And some of the things people have written about, mafia, cinema, architecture, tourism, linguistics, the Jews in Italy, cafe culture, futurism, crime, etc. Um, not all of these were things that we taught in the mainstreams of our courses, but people have their own interests, and sometimes those interests come in from their other subject. For example, if you've done history of art, uh, this was one topic we had recently, uh, William Turner's Paintings of Venice. Somebody who had done film studies and Italian, continued Italian into the fourth year, but looked at Italian aspects. Uh, a, a translator, a person who is interested in, in translating and creative writing, wrote about the problems of translating a, uh, one of the great modern Italian poets, somebody with historical interests. This was a mature student um, who had actually uh, worked in policy-making areas in, in the public service, came in afterwards to do a degree with us, and we're very fond of our mature students, decided to analyze the role of Giuseppe Mazzini in the 19th century Italian Risorgimento. So more, here's art and literature brought together. History and Italian culture. Napoleon was, among other things, an Italian, uh, well, from Corsica, but from, with a Tuscan background. Um, cinema, again, gender relations. Fellini's cinema. Um, and we, uh, we also have an exchange of a full year in the University of Pavia, which is available to people going on into the fourth year. Our, our graduates go into all kinds of work, really, everything from, from journalism to uh, football management. Management consultant, actor, author, playwright, lecturer, even some of that, model. Uh, yes, another playwright. Um, this man is the director of communications for the Football Association, having got into that, by first of all getting a job with Ryanair because he knew Italian and they wanted somebody in Italy. He then got into public relations for Ryanair, which must be one of the more interesting jobs one could take on, and from that migrated into uh, football. Uh, okay, another academic, uh, now lecture, lecturer in English in York, uh, a radio producer. Yeah, it's up to yourself. Do what you're interested in. Enjoy what you do. It's four years, so you cannot possibly get through four years on the basis of, I know exactly the job I'm going to get when, at the end of it. The job you get at the end of it may not exist today. Planning the past is a great idea, but planning the future, I'm not so sure. Thank you for your attention. I hope that some of you will continue either coming to do Italian here or to do something else involving languages and relationships between cultures because a knowledge of languages and cultures, especially other peoples in the world of today, is extremely useful, and more than that, it's very enriching to you personally. Thank you for your attention, and if you want to ask questions or come down and talk to me, I'm very happy. Thank you.